In Cheshire, wealthy businesswoman and ex-model Jude Cisse lives in a multi-million pound eight-bedroom manor house set within 10 acres of land. She shares her home with her three young sons. His name is Prince and he's annoying, very annoying. And the same with Marley. Granny Christine is regularly on hand to help out around the home. God, I love this job. <laughs> Jude runs a successful property business with a portfolio worth over £6 million. Definitely always been an entrepreneur. I've always looked at ways of making money. I set my first company up when I was 22 years old. You know, I, I suppose I've always had nice, expensive taste. My ex-husband and I bought the house in 2005. It's a manor house and we got the titles Lord and Lady Fudgeham when we purchased the house. So I'm still Lady Fudgeham. I'd say I'm most known for being a footballer's wife. I was married to Jibril Cissé. He's a French international and he used to play for Liverpool. I didn't go and get married to a footballer because I wanted to be a wag. There was no such thing as a wag when I got married. Jude Cissé's income puts her easily amongst the wealthiest 10% in Britain. She's not a fan of low-cost holidays and spends thousands jetting around the world in pursuit of a great time for her and the boys. So when we do go on holidays, I do like to treat them a little bit and take them to fancy restaurants or to nice places. But most of all, she likes to forget the stress of everyday life at her very own and very private luxurious stuffed villa in Morocco, where the boys spend most days playing in the villa's pool. The villa in Morocco is on a prestigious golf course and it overlooks the Atlas Mountains. My worst holiday would be just crammed up constantly in a building with the kids. It's not just the kids. Granny Christine usually comes along too. I mean, obviously, we sort of, like, get on each other's nerves now and then, but that's what happens in families, isn't it? It's like having a husband, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. Yeah, you're the husband and the wife. <laughs> 200 miles south in London are the McQueen family. We live in Peckham. The area's OK. <laughs> There's nothing. It's not a bad place. The McQueens live in a housing association rented flat on a busy main road. With six children ranging from 6 to 13, this is one very busy household. Our family is just loving, fun. Big. Big. Very big. <laughs> Dad Jay earns £450 a week working long hours as a London bus driver, while Mum Leah spends her days looking after the children and homeschools the three youngest. Makai wasn't doing well in school because of his autism. Kiara's got chronic lung disease, she was picking up so many bugs. So I decided to be at home and to look after my kids. Jay and Leah work hard for their six children, but can rarely afford to take the family on holiday. After paying more bills, getting food and gas and electric each week, um, money on the food would be about £60. Yeah, about £60. And that's it, yeah. That doesn't leave much money for holidays. Their last one, two years ago, was just one week at a packed caravan park on the south coast. My dream holiday would be to be able to relax and also be able to watch the kids have fun. <laughs> Two families, one from the richest 10%. You know, I, I suppose I've always had nice, expensive taste. The other scraping the pennies. So after paying more bills, money on the food would be about £60. Or swapping holidays. We have to make a packed lunch for each day. You all happy with that? And budgets. £260. To find out whether big money always buys happiness on holiday. Everything was just perfect. In Devon, Jude is still getting used to a lot less personal space on the caravan site than she has in Morocco. Do you know what I found really strange this morning? I was making a cup of tea and I opened the curtains and there's a guy sitting there and he's just like that staring and I thought, wow, this is so weird. <laughs> then I turned around here and I thought, oh, the sun's there, so I'll open these curtains. I opened this curtain there's a guy there with a cup of tea staring at me as well and I thought, oh, my God. <laughs> So now I know in the morning, keep the curtains closed until you're actually ready. 
In Marrakesh, the McQueens are about to find out that there's more to their expensive holiday than just lounging by the pool. Today, they're off on the hike up the Atlas Mountains that Lee has been dreading. Looking forward to everything except for the trekking. A long walk. Come on. All right. Everyone put on your seatbelt, please. Let's go. Two hours outside Marrakesh, the mountains are a popular destination with wealthy tourists. You up that hill. The McQueens are on a steep two-mile trek in 40-degree heat, rewarded with lunch at the top in a traditional village. They don't usually hike on their holidays or anywhere come to that. Come on, let's go. There's a nice breeze, at least. Oh. It's beautiful. I'll take a picture of you there. All right, Brandon. Would I hold this, please? I'll wait. No, this, this, just this cam. I'm not cool with the edge. The family have been walking for just over an hour, and the 40-degree heat is beginning to take its toll on Leah. I'm nearly over this. Just letting you know. <laughs> My legs are going funny. That's when you get to the top, and that's when you can enjoy the views and all the rest of it. But it's a nice experience for the kids to do. They even got to see some sheep and chickens and a goat. But I do feel that, that a quad bike should be to hand. In Devon, away from the crowds, the Cissé boys are also tackling a brand new activity while Jude watches on. Costing £8.50 an hour, it's within the holiday budget. Using your wrist very slowly. Could you give me two maggots, please? Are you not scared? No. Right. Just... Hold them, Mum. You can't feel anything. No, you're right, thanks. I don't want to hold that, thank you. <laughs> there. You got one this time. Get it, get it, please, get it. What do we do now with it? He goes back in the water slowly. Oh! oh the of him. Wow! Ooh. Look at that, Marley. How many chips do you get with this one? Fish and chips for dinner tonight. I think fishing's going really, really well today. No, I don't think. I know it is. Freezing oh, cup. wow! Look at the colour on that, Prince. The children are enjoying themselves. They've been catching them left, right and centre, so I'm really pleased for them. A family holiday centred mostly around kids' activities isn't something the CSAs normally do. 100% I'm enjoying the swap more than I thought I would because it's more about the children. That's the whole point of this holiday is to make memories, isn't it, and have a happy childhood. Ah, it feels so weird. No, I'm all right, thank you. Ah, <laughs> My day was very good because we went fishing. I caught loads of fish. They enjoyed it so much so that I think they've got a new hobby now and it's something we'll probably take up in the future. I might even let them do it when we get back to uh, Cheshire. So I'm really pleased with that. My day today was lovely. I think it's better than Morocco because you can have like, fishing here. The weather's decent in Morocco, it's too hot. I'm very happy here. In Morocco, the McQueen's personal chef is serving up another feast for dinner. Perfect after the long, hard climb up a mountain. But Leah is starting to question whether this holiday life of luxury is for her. It's so nice to just sit down and eat. Mm. But I don't know what to do with myself at the same time. It's true, isn't it? Because everything that we would normally do is getting done for us. Yeah. Like, my food is even too hot for me because I'm used to eating my food kind of, like, cool. I'm feeling fidgety because I'm just like, there must be something that needs to be done. I feel a bit lost not being able to do things for the kids. Maybe 24-7 service isn't all it's cracked up to be. Obviously, I keep myself busy by getting things prepared, organising things, and not having that has got me a bit like, what am I doing? How can I have fun with this? 